everyone. Welcome back to Bitwise of the Podcast. And today we are heading to Pandora and we're covering Borderlands. As always, I'm Kate and I'm here with Adrian. Hey, how's it going? And Matt. Hello. And uh, Matt is going to be leading us through this episode. So yeah. go do things, say things, teach us. Really? Is that what we're going with? Well, you say that I need to give you transition so that was, that was whatever funny. anyways <laughs> as always when we do the gaming ones outside of like random anime stuff basically this is what i get to do so as we have an intro question and it's going to be very very unique as in have you played borderlands have you played anything recently also because <laughs> i was lazy from my last notes from gears of war episode if you have not listened go check it out and so i just changed gears of war to borderlands <laughs> that's how creative i am so creative you can go yes. first, Adrian. Uh, I played Borderlands 2. I don't think I ever played Borderlands 1. I did play Borderlands 2 because I had it on Steam for, like, on sale. And that's really about it. I haven't touched it in a long time. In, like, a real, real long time. Um, but, yeah, I played Borderlands 2. I like it. It's fun. It's fun stuff. Do you think they drink Bang in Borderlands? Like, what like flavors do you think, like, they drink in Borderlands? All of now them. Now I'm thinking about it. All, all of them. Like, of all video games, Bang, like, should definitely go get sponsored by Borderlands. I think that'd be perfect. Not wrong. They're crazy. <laughs> they are kind of crazy. That's why the game's so good. Um, so I've played every single Borderlands. I had both, and when I say that, I mean, I've played both of them and all of their content, with the exception of, like, the last two DLCs for Borderlands 2. Um, actually, no. Technic yeah. So here's what happened. I had them all 100 on my Xbox, and then they kept adding more things, and then I would go back, and I would play through it all again, and 100 it again, and then they would add new things. Um, I own the Handsome Jack collection, but I've actually never played through it, and I haven't played the new DLC that came out to Bridge 2-3, to three, um, which I really want to do, but like I barely have time to play Gears, so I probably... I just need to get like knocked on my butt with like a bad flu or something so i don't have to do anything and i can just sit down and like do all of that again um but yeah no i love borderlands i sunk a lot of time into it it is also like your gears episode a game that i have never played by myself so that also helped the experience so you said you played all borderlands you do realize there's six games right yes okay because you only mentioned the two, pretty much, and then the collection. Hold on. Well, because there were the branches that they had. Yes, I've played Tales from the Borderlands. I don't remember if I've played the pre-sequel. And I didn't play the one that came out this year. Yeah. Yeah, which we'll get into. Okay, so I've played one and two to completion multiple times until their last DLCs for each one. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so... I played a little bit of 2, as in, like, basically I played a demo's worth of 2. Obviously, it came out in 2012, which we'll get into, and that's about the year that I had to go to grad school, so I had no time for games. But for Borderlands 1, I got a ton. Like, I beat that game multiple times, had multiple characters. They all end up being the same class of the character um, all the time, because I would I that I only liked one class. Oh, so we're going to have to fight over Amara, I think. Okay. Um, but no, like, I played a ton of Borderlands. I'm also with you of, like, I completed the game. I got my thousand of a thousand. Then they released it down with content, and I had to get my other thousand of a thousand. Uh, you know, my other hundred. I, I think they do a hundred per d DLC. It's either a hundred or two hundred. And so then I had to go back to do it, and I did that, like, three times. And I don't think I did the very, very last one, and I think I refused to turn it on, so that way it still says it's complete, so it won't update. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was one of the few games that I'm like, yeah, and then it was such disappointment of like, quit adding achievements. I know they're great, but you're ruining my perfect score. Yep. Like, I just don't have the time to keep coming back and playing all of them. I did have fun so, with Borderlands 1 with all the modded weapons, and I had modded weapons and shields by the end, and so it was great. My first time I played Borderlands, I was playing Lilith with a modded shield, and I never died. No. By the it time I got so done, good. I just didn't even so die. I had a gray weapon that just one-shot anything. It was awesome at the end. Obviously, it's cool getting all the different guns, which we'll talk about why, you know, guns. But 
at the end, especially when you're trying just like, I just want these stupid achievements because you're ruining my perfect thing. It was nice just to throw on like the modded stuff and be like, all right, this is cool. Which is one of the things that I always kind of wondered, and I'm sure we'll talk about it. Like when it comes to modding in Borderland, I wasn't sure exactly how people did it because I knew that like mods happen on PCs and stuff. But I, all of a sudden, my friend was like, oh, do you want a shield that will make sure you never die? And I was like, yes, please. So I don't remember exactly, I don't think I have how they start. I do remember that you could duplicate them through the vending okay. machines. And that's how oh, you're able to keep, and you're allowed, it's something to do with the vending machines. I don't remember exactly how it was done, but yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess oh. I'll start off, what? I was going to say, I did look up the games. Uh, I did not play Tales from the Borderlands because it was the Telltale's one. I yes, I know. I was the pre-sequel. Yeah, I was like, I have no idea if you played any of these other games, but that's yeah, fine. I played the pre-sequel. I did not play Tales from the Borderlands or the most recent. Right. Can you explain a pre-sequel to me? <laughs> Is that just like Borderlands, like... It's called Borderlands, or like... Borderlands, the money grab, but, uh, yeah. Oh, gotcha. I mean, what does that even mean? It's, it's where, does it, between, where does that game take place? It's between one and two, so it's the pre-sequel. It's not a prequel to the whole series, but it's a prequel uh, to the sequel. Gotcha. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. It gotcha, happens between gotcha. them. It's a Rogue One. Yeah, it makes sense. Grab. Gotcha. Good. Um, which, if I remember correctly, the game was actually really good. It's not rated well. <laughs> you might. But I'm also just like, I guess it's also hard too because I'm like, it, I play Borderlands because it's a looter shooter, and as much I mean, Lilith's story <sighs> is the best, but like. I love in the intro, matter. Kate's just going to, like, talk about all of our topics and just go and we're like, why do we even do the rest of the show if Kate's just going to tell us <laughs> everything that we already need to know? We're done. Yes. Ten minutes. Thanks, Kate. Yes. Well, I'm excited because I've only played the second one, and I definitely did not 100 it because I played other stuff. So I'm excited, Matt. <laughs> tell me more. Anyway, so start this game... Um, Basically, some little background. As we always start, the franchise began in 2009. It was created by Gearbox Software. 2K is the publisher. And basically, nothing special. It's been on pretty much every console and PC platform you can think of. And voila. There we go. <laughs> that's about all of the creative history that's been about it for a while. Um, so I did kind of get a synopsis of this. And I kind of just copied and pasted the synopsis to run to read it. Because it was kind of the best one. And... It's weird because it's nice, but also it takes a lot to probably actually see all of this technically in the games, depending on where you're at. Um, the game and Borderlands take place on the planet Pandora. Pandora is believed to be rich with mineral wealth, leading to several mega corporations to send colony ships there to capitalize on it. But once they arrive, they find little value outside of basically alien artifacts from a race un known as the Kate Aredi Aredians. I don't know Aredians. how you pronounce that. Iridians. Iridians. And numerous native life forms to make it dangerous, uh, make it too dangerous. Many of the corporations abandoned the planet, leaving the workforce force behind, <laughs> which were basically former prisoners coerced into, in, into employment, which who take over the planet as bandits and raiders. However, a study of the alien artifacts lead to the discovery of these mythical vaults filled with untold treasure and wealth. Corporations and military forces return to the planet, along with a number of vault hunters, who basically you get to play, um, who seek to find the vaults themselves. And basically it's classified as kind of like this co-op, role-playing, first-person, open-world shooter, looter, looter shooter, shooter game. There's a lot of classifications. Sci-fi, You got Western, millions of guns, you kill a whole bunch of things, and you loot everything. Is this a military shooter? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is a looter shooter, as in you just go in, you mow down a whole bunch of people, you get a whole bunch of guns that pop out, you look for the right colors because everything is color-coded, you run to them, and you just pretty much farm and get loot, and it's great. It has a good story, the first one. Oh, no, yeah, I think there's is, no think... story in the first game. The oh, no. second uh, one, the second one's when they add a story. The first one, there's like literally almost no story. Ends oh, with like, the second you one found Pandora's one. box. That's right. There's no point to the first one other than just blow. Well, Looter shooter. That's the yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll get a little more into that. Guns, um, so, guns, guns, and in three, we're getting guns with legs. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, there is more stuff in here, but uh, as far as the games, there's a total of quote unquote seven games with Borderlands three releasing pretty much. Um, we are recording this before, but it'll be released by the time this is released, so it will be out. 
Um, obviously, one of these games is the Handsome Collection or Handsome Jack Collection, which is basically a collection of the games and ports basically ported over that Kate Handsome had mentioned. Jack is a daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to um, point it out. Uh huh. So, the length of the games you have Borderlands 2009 with an 84 Metacritic, uh, Borderlands 2 t- 2012, a 90 Metacritic average. And I would say average because. Um, this is during the time frame also where we still have like these consoles where it's like it's a 91 on PlayStation, but it's an 89 on PC and then it's like a 90 on Xbox and so forth. So I just kind of did a little quick average of these. Um, Borderlands Legend, which is one of these spinoffs in 2012, which is basically a came on iOS. It's an, I real-time. had an iPhone at that time. It's a real time and... strategy game and there's not many reviews. Basically everybody gave it any, anywhere between like a 5 and maybe a 6.5. I downloaded it and it was bad. Yeah, nobody liked it. It was game. extremely poorly optimized and this was still back in like the start of mobile gaming where like my battery <laughs> was gone. This was them trying to capitalize on Borderland 2. Pretty much. It was bad. Yeah. Um, then Borderland, the pre-sequel, which is another one of the main games, came out in 2014, has an average of a 75 on Metacritic. Like a solid 85. 75. 85. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tales of the Borderlands came out in 2014, has an average of about an 87. Obviously, it's a little different because it's, by, it's a spinoff game from Telltale Games, which is R.I.P. apparently, or actually they exist now. I have no idea what they're doing. R.I.P. because everything that existed is gone. They were Their IPs were bought by another place. They exist, but they don't exist. But um, either way, um, this one's obviously broke down. If you ever, anybody's ever played a Telltale game, basically it broke down an episode, so each episode kind of, you know, has different ratings. Um, I think the collective overall was about an 87 in general. Visual uh, novel. Yeah. Um, apparently there was one game called Borderlands, Borderlands Online from 2015. It actually got canceled. It was supposed to be a spinoff game by 2K China, and it was only designed for China. And basically they realized it wouldn't make enough profits, and then basically they not only canceled the game, then they closed down 2K China Studios. Oh, shit. <laughs> basically this okay. was their big 2K China thing, and it didn't, wasn't looking like they were going to get enough profits, so they just closed the whole thing down, closed everything, packed up ship, and left. To be fair, I would 10 out of 10 play a Borderlands MMO. <laughs> so. Which is what that sounds like. Yeah. Something like that. Um, then we have basically the Borderlands, the Handsome Jack collection in 2015. Got an 82. It's basically a bunch of ports of the games. So in a newer version. And then we have Borderlands 3, which just released. And there's, uh, according to here, we have some reviews up. It's about an 85 right now. It's still early. Um, they're also been dealing with the lovely since they are going to be exclusive on Epic st- game stores, and so apparently people hate this, and so they are quote unquote review bombing it and yeah. everything else, which is also interesting because we don't get this for Sony when Sony does this stuff, but we do it when Epic Game Store Can you does. Explain it. a little bit what that means, Matt, like in case people aren't familiar. So with, basically, with when it comes, yeah. So basically, there are two. Um, I look at you can look at it in kind of terms of console, but this is from PC version. Steam is the number one distributor for games throughout PC. So if basically, if you want to buy a game on a PC, you have two ways of doing this: either you go directly to the retail retailer, or some like Amazon type way. But ninety nine percent of the time, they're just going to give you basically a Steam code or a Steam platform where basically you go within here and you buy your game through there. Um, obviously they have a monopoly on the thing for the most part, and I can actually say that because I don't think there's anything out there. And no, a lot you of... you have? Hmm? Does you, you do, I guess, or do we count like stuff like you play and stuff now? So some things? of those work, but they just don't make up enough of the market at all. So there's oh, probably like 10, sense. there's like 10 games on you play probably. And they're just only big Ubisoft games, which one, I think you can probably still get some of them on Steam. But two, it's still like Steam has, they get like a thousand games a, a month, probably. Okay. Um, but so to combat that, because Steam takes a huge chop uh, for the profits, about like 30% of everything, um, basically Epic Game, Epic Game decided to do their own store. And so one way to get people to come to your store is to pay a little bit more money for exclusive distribution rights 
And so they've been getting a lot of, kind of like what Microsoft did to kind of get back, where they would be like, the game is only going to be available through this platform for like a limited amount of time before it might come to different ways of being distributed. Kind of like if you ever played PUBG that was announced last year um, for Xbox, you could only play it on Xbox for like six months before you could actually get it on PlayStation. And a lot of this is like Epic capitalizing on its Fortnite like leverage. Yes, basically Fortnite made them like billions of dollars and so they're like we can make a game store uh <laughs> um there's a few other ones out there but yeah I think gog is one yeah yeah it's, i think so it's real small there's also like a flute turbo plays another weird one that's supposed to be coming yeah. playing it's kind of like ba- at this point it's basically like twitch worrying about people coming for them from mixer of which they're still be coming from them but they still own like 95 percent of the market yeah. share which yeah. Like, and, yeah, I just wanted I just wanted you to like to explain a little more so people like if they're not familiar that you know how because I don't think the normal thing is like oh Fortnite I don't know how many people connect Fortnite like immediately with Epic yeah. so just to kind of like frame that so people know that like, like it's, it's pretty it's a pretty big deal that they're doing that with Borderlands Three being yes. you know essentially kind of like I'm not mad about it but like I would like to have all my Borderlands on one platform but now I can't my only issue about it is like I said people rage about this but we don't care when Sony does the exact same thing yeah, yeah. that's like, my issue they're fine so long as they're a console but split up my PC games which at the end of the day like what um Apex isn't on Steam yeah and, like like they're right. like there are things that are going directly through publishers now. Like EA has their platform, you play as their platform. They're small. Trust me, it's annoying and I hate it. <laughs> They're small, yeah. but like it's essentially just opening up those things. And at least from what I saw in the Epic Steam debate, is Epic is going to ultimately give and I could be wrong, like correct me if any of this has changed, Epic is actually giving a lot of creators more profit Cut. share yes. of the well, main- content. Basically, Earth that's the main thing Steam with Steam is to Steam swap. Basically, if you said you're going to put your game on Steam, they automatically take 30% of your profits right off the top before any other thing. Yeah. Obviously, that yeah. number could I mean, change, but it, the last I knew, that was the number. I don't. I just don't think like you should just be upset about it. Like it's kind of dumb to go review bomb something for that because you have to. You have to click one more button. Oh yeah. no! I will like, say you don't have to switch out consoles. It's not just consoles. review bombing. They're getting death threats. Like when yeah, we yeah, the it's ridiculous, thing, man. Three thing. There were cops with ARs everywhere on the outside. Like, they were legitimately terrified that somebody was going to do something because of how much they've been getting attacked. Which I don't yeah, understand. It's crazy, man. Because, like, like, if you're a gamer, right? Like, I'm looking at my taskbar right now. I have Origin. I have my League <laughs> Launcher. I have Battle.net. I have Steam. Like, that's just what you have as a PC gamer. Get over it. You get to click one more button. To be Ooh. fair, I will just defend in some way of like, I hate all these damn launchers because they're annoying. And then when I try to start my computer, oh my gosh, it's like a massive fight between. That is I have, but that's awesome I have like you eight never of them. turn off your computer. Between Steam, Battle.net, I have um, Uplay, then I have the Bethesda launcher. Twitch apparently runs I, games. I mean, <laughs> you but could Matt, just you go to, to your sandwich? settings and like put it to not out of oh i mean i have eventually done that already but it's still a pain <laughs> in the ass I mean, it's better than having to go buy a whole 400 hundred dollar console yeah. oh no it is totally i don't mind i would <laughs> gladly download your launcher on my games provider on my pc well over like i, na- I now yeah. have to go buy new new systems yeah yeah right. like that's which also, has been my sure biggest Matt problem with this is not like angrily typing at people yeah definitely not right it's just it's just just weird yeah. Just weird things to be mad about. Like, yeah. You're getting a Borderlands 3. Yeah, what except, are you upset about? I don't know. It's, uh, it's My also... biggest issue, like I said, is we care about Epic Game Store. We don't care about Sony doing it. Yeah. yeah. Which, to be and fair, we say we be... by, like, just in general. Yeah, like, yes. we, we care. as a gamers. <laughs> we, like, you know how we bad see... I want to play Spider-Man, <laughs> but I, I want to hold on to my morals and not go buy PS4? So, morals like, are money. Say, we, we should put this <laughs> out there. When we say we, we are, like, all three of us are gamers. It is just easy for us to just say we as in gamers. Because yeah. gamers rise up over the stupidest things. And Borderlands has had multiple incidences with it at this point. <sighs> Definitely. But now that we've had that fun talk, uh, let's kind of move into some of the <laughs> other other media. Um, apparently, there's a tabletop card game called Borderland Tiny Tina's Robot Tea Party, which was shown at PAX E 2019, and they actually sold it. Um, so that's where they debuted it. 
Um, they've also had two comic runs, one in 2012 and one in 2014 to 2015 by IDW. Um, the one in 2012 called Borderlands Origins. It was a four-issue miniseries that fills the backstory of the original four Vault Hunters. And then they have Borderlands Fall of uh, Fall of Prystone, which for those of you who remember, I think is the original starting quote-unquote city you start in, if you want to call it a city. Um, the run-down deserted place that had buildings. Um, city by Borderlands standards. Yeah. Um, in 2014, 2015, it was an eight-issue series that followed the events of the Borderlands games, I believe. And then there's actually a series of three book novels that are kind of based on the universe in general, which are called, all written by John Shirley, and they're Borderlands, The Fallen, The Unconquered, and Gunsight. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get another one. Those but are who very un borderlands names for Borderlands books. I don't know. Ask John Shirley, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it. Which, which we get to the last part, which is the fun part of like I'm still wondering what the hell people are doing with the thing. Apparently, there's been a movie in the works since about 2015. As of June 2019, it's basically been confirmed it's happening by Lionsgate. And basically, kind of how we talked about on the Gears episode, people are stupid, and I'm not sure what's the worst idea of this or the Gears movie, such as it will use the quote unquote so- source material, and it's not set in an alternate reality, but it might as well as they will have familiar faces and characters, but they're swapping their roles, their background stories. Basically, you're going to get names as selling points, but they're going to be nothing that you know of as far as the actual game lore or their game thing. And apparently Gearbox... So mad. And apparently Gearbox wants The Rock to voice Claptrap. No! <laughs> no, it, I hate will, everything about this movie. And it will be okay. rated R. What if Vin Diesel voice Claptrap? He probably deserves it. This movie sounds He's like it's going to be awful. <laughs> he says one word in Guardians. It's not the same. <laughs> and I bet he made Come on, man. Day. He's the Iron Giant. He's been robots before. <laughs> I don't know how you all feel. I read this and I kind of got excited. And then I started reading more and I was like, so this is going to be a not Borderlands movie, but you're going to use all the characters to sell this, but we're just going to make up shit. But we're using the source material. Yeah, I mean, unless you're doing, I don't know, man. Like, if you want to get away from, like, source material and stuff, like, why not just do what, like, Pokemon da- did and just do it like an in-universe thing, but not have it be part of the main story? I don't even know exactly. I think of, like, all the games, like, where they just, like, change everything. As much as I enjoy the Warcraft movie, like, you should have just done the story. It, you had all this lore. You could have just done the, the thing from the Warcraft games, and you would have been completely fine. But no, you want to change stuff and make stuff like, you know, it just, just stop changing stuff. You, you have the source material there. Just just go with it. Basically, yeah, like Lilith's going to be in there. And, and she's supposed to be a thief. That is what they know, a legendary thief. Which frustrates me <laughs> to no freaking end. Like, oh, it hurts. Lilith is amazing. She's my favorite. And I'm, and this is how I know I have to fight Matt for Amara in, in three, because the sirens are my, my babies. I just want Lilith back. That's all I want. I don't care about the other ones. That's all that matters. To be that's fair, why that's I why she was on my team sight. in the justice that's why she was on my team in the justice league episode oh yeah that's <laughs> right you did put her on your team in the justice league episode yeah. but yes yeah, so apparently we are getting a movie who knows when it's going to happen who knows what's going to happen but apparently it's probably going to be garbage just like the gears thing because it may not have as many books and it may not have as many comics or whatever else and not quite as much but still have stories there especially for like a movie <laughs> so but yeah all they said is they're gonna have familiar characters and familiar things but that's about oh. it it's just gonna be vaguely basically some names and maybe they might look like them but everything else has changed yeah yeah this doesn't this doesn't need to go in but i was like wondering like why wouldn't you just get the guy who voices claptrap to voice claptrap so that's a whole nother issue yeah, I, I don't know if put, this is in there or not. I didn't put that but, in there because I didn't have time gotcha. to like figure out what the hell that was. What? That was weird. Claptrap voice actor accuses Gearbox CEO of assault and underpayment. Yes, and then he was fired before or after that yeah. happened. One of the two. I think I think it was after, if I remember correctly. 
Yeah, I think it was after. I yeah, think. it was after. So I'm not sure why they let him go. There's some disagreement. And then basically after they fired him from Claptrap, um, he had another person come in. Yeah, he filed all that. Yeah, that makes sense. It was one of those I ran out of time, but I saw it, and I was just kind of like, we can move along with this. Yeah. Yeah, Also, I didn't think there was... Also, I didn't know, like, we haven't technically... Jim... So, to be fair, the dudes actually put in a lawsuit against him for it. If a lawsuit is involved, I'm inclined to believe. Yeah, and the guy that they got is a big anime dub person. Yes. For Borderlands 3. Cool. Sorry, I was just curious no, if uh, we were gonna talk about it at all, but we, we don't have to because I, I don't really. If we don't throw it in the end. That's not. I'm not a poet. Um, like I said, I don't know the whole. We'd have to look it up again while we do it, but yeah. But then, like, leads you to believe, like, why not just get the guy who does, you know, Denny from Full Metal Alchemist to do your voice acting? Yeah. Like, that's a legit voice actor. Why not? Why get the Rock for that? It's kind of dumb. I don't know. All right, sorry, Matt. Go for it. So we'll get into the but why those after this. Hey everyone, do you like But Why Though? Well, the PodCoin app is a podcast player that pays you to listen to this podcast and every other podcast. Just get the PodCoin app on your iPhone or Android and start listening today. It's free and super easy to use, with every minute you listen getting you that sweet, sweet coins. It turns your podcast listening into charity. Or, if you're like me, you can get some Amazon or Starbucks gift cards. I use the PodCoin app to do all my podcast listening now, and I can personally say that I love it. Seriously, just go to the PodCoin app and use invite code ButWhyThough. That's B-U-T-W-H-Y-T-H-O, and you'll get 300 PodCoin just for signing up if you use our code. That's 300 PodCoin just for signing up using code ButWhyThough. So go ahead and give PodCoin a try today. Now that you guys had a fun time listening to that, um, we'll get into the but why those here. And we'll start with basically at this point what I always start with. It's a successful franchise. I know that's a shocker. I am very creative. We've been through this. Um, it was a franchise that's been around for almost 10 years. Not quite as long as some of the other ones. But obviously it's still going as we just got a game released. I'm sure there's going to be more going. Um, as of 2019, from what I found, it sold over 48 million units. Or they at least shipped out and whatnot. So it's definitely up there. And it's 22. Cool. It's 22 million, just, 22 million just from Borderlands 2 alone. Which, actually, when I looked up some of the lists and everything, it's actually pretty impressive for its age. Because outside of what I could find, basically Just Dance, which we really don't count that, because, one, there's so many of them, and two, like, it came free for a long time with these damn Wii games, which I hate that they throw these in there, but I understand. <laughs> you don't like e- uh, Wii Sports being one of like the best-selling games of all time? Yeah, because all it was was people <laughs> bought a Wii, and you got a free game. I don't count you buying a game, but they played it the first time. Like, this is cool. Not now I hate statistics work. Uh, <laughs> anyways, and then Minecraft would probably be the other one that's been that came out later. All the rest of the games, if you look at these lists, which we've kind of talked multiple times in episodes, it's like, you know... Mario, you know, 1980-something. Even Halo's been around for, you know, 20-plus years. Um, I guess when you look at where it's looked at on the list and kind of tied with, per se, because obviously it depends on where you go. This video game numbers suck. Um, it's kind of tied with Tekken, or in that range of Tekken, and that's been around since 1994. So it had a nice 15... And also, I'm pretty sure there's been a lot more games of Tekken than there have been of uh, Borderlands. There, there, there are... There are a lot of Tekken games. Yeah. Tekken's my favorite fighting franchise. There's a lot. Yeah. So there's definitely always some games that have been up there, but at least from its age of 2009 and above, it just kind of hasn't got there. And I'm sure if they keep continuing to build, and Borderlands 3, I'm assuming already looked to probably sell at least three. I think it's already sold at least three million or something like that in pre-sales and probably if not more. It's never going to get to the crazy wow. numbers of like, Call of Duty, which somehow is like in the 300, that 300 million range, which I'm still surprised it's still going that strong. Um, Free orders, man. Yeah. Um, another thing is, they, so they don't have a Marcus Phoenix, but they do kind of have a handsome Jack in Claptrap. <laughs> um, Claptrap kind of been one of the most recognizable video game yep. characters, and I'm going to put recognizable because apparently a lot of critics hate the damn thing. <laughs> Why? He's Apparently. adorable and funny, and I'm happy I'm a critic now, so I can show him some love. 
Yeah. So we'll talk about we'll go with Handsome Jack real fast, only because the gears we had the the source that we used from gears. Handsome Jack is actually on that list as well. Um, the one nice. that had Marcus. Whitney yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, clap Where was he at again? Do you, do you remember? Uh, I'll, your head. I I'll check. Voice. I'll check while you while you pull yeah. up. Clap, while you look yeah. at Claptrap. Um, Claptrap is on some of the other ones. It's the most iconic. Basically, there's another few lists that's from like from this year as well that they have Claptrap on there. Um, we went to we just got back from Pax West where they had it. They didn't have all the other people. They had Pax West or Claptrap on there um, as a statue. He was also at the Borderlands, Borderlands launch party. So, I mean, Claptrap is everywhere when you see well, him rolling like, around. It's more like they had the other ones, but Claptrap was in, like, the high traffic area. And yeah. he was always having pictures taken. Well, they had their other ones as in, like, these are the characters for Borderlands 3 versus, like, Claptrap oh, is that's fair. essentially around, like, they didn't have the people from Borderlands 1. He's they the consistent have... one. Yes. Um, but the funny thing is, like I said, um, if you look up a lot of reviews, he is hated by a lot. He, he's hated by a lot of critics. They call him annoying. They call him stupid. They they really just hate him. Any review basically talks about how much they hate that robot. Um, yeah, he's forty three on that list. Yeah, that we talked about for uh, gears. If you haven't listened to our gears episode yet, yeah, go listen to it and then go play gears. It's fun. Yeah. Um, rum, yeah. Rum, 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 rum. I know a lot of yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people. <laughs> I know do like crap crap trap clap trap. Crap um, trap is that what they call? Is that the critics call? Yeah, crap trap. <laughs> but uh, yeah, apparently critics do not like him. Um, funny thing is, I looked up when I looked at him. Apparently, he has his own. He's got his own toys and everything. Clap trap does. He's got his own little like McFar- characters and everything. Yeah, no. We're just being I, a tiny little robot that does nothing other than run around. I and have, get... There's like a two hundred dollar statue on Amazon that I want of him. Yeah. No. Don't don't Matt do it. Space. Don't do it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I get it, but it's like for what his, his actual Funko role is also adorable. Like, look at that. Just a little, a little hat. Oh a little my shoulder gosh. Pla- shoulder pads. Emperor Claptrap. <laughs> He's perfect. Yeah. Why yeah. would anybody hate him? Because apparently he's annoying, and he sounds very They're lonely annoying. and depressed. <laughs> They are um, annoying. Hmm. Um, Borderlands itself has actually won quite a... I mean, not quite a bit of awards, but it has some, won some. Um, especially mainly Borderlands 2. Borderlands itself, it kind of won a few, but it's actually just kind of... It's rated good, but not great. It's not critically acclaimed or anything. Now, Borderlands... The surprising one before we get into Borderlands 2, Tales from the Borderlands apparently won multiple awards. And it's actually, one of the episodes is critically acclaimed, and it's kind of highly rated for a Telltale game. Not surprised. Well, don't yeah. most Telltale games do well? Ah, uh, probably. I mean, they are a very unique genre, so I don't know what all they compete against. But, yeah. but the main one, pretty much Borderlands Two, which obviously won multiple awards, is highly rated, claimed. And I did want to just mention this: um, they got nominated for f- five Spike TV Video Game Awards. If anybody remembers what that is, yes, I do, and I <laughs> used to watch it. <laughs> Yeah, obviously we talk about awards, but I really wanted to mention that because they no longer exist. <laughs> I think they were in the last year that they existed too. <laughs> they won because I think it ran from like two thousand one to twenty thirteen. I think so that last year cycle. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it also won some uh, you know like game of the year awards and everything else. So which kind of gets into like this isn't like groundbreaking or anything, but. And they weren't, like, the most highly rated game, but it's unique. So we'll get into, like, the gameplay. Um, As I started off with, Borderlands is an RPG, first-person shooter, looter shooter, sci-fi western, co-op, whatever type genre you can throw in there, it's in there pretty much type game. (laughs) I also don't, I I, I think I remember I explained this difference in the Gears episode, but I'm going to explain it again because people don't know the difference between co-op and multiplayer multiplayer you go into lobbies and play with people and it can't be played by yourself co-op you can play by yourself or you can play with friends and you can invite them you don't have to play with people well the main thing about co-op that i've always understood is multiplayer means there's probably a good chance that i'm going to be killing my friends co-op means i can't kill my friends yeah i can be a dick to my friends but i cannot kill them you can take my loot yes that's for sure 
Um, so kind of get in this. This game was back in 2005. Was basically initially pitched as basically Halo meets Diablo. <laughs> Obviously, I hate that description. That's how it was pitched. And but it's it, really not wrong. It's right? not how, like how is this even like remotely Halo? Because Diablo is all about killing stuff and hoping your loot drops. That's so and basically, fine. Halo is about I, shooting things. Okay, no, 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 no. Game type, I can understand Diablo. Halo, just because there is a gun in the game, doesn't make it like that game. It's a, it's first a futuristic part. shooting game. Yeah, I mean, it's... on a different planet. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> At that um, time, two like two thousand nine, like as right ha- like peak like Halo. So this is two thousand five when they do it, so this is probably almost about peak Halo, almost Halo two region, yeah. and almost peak Diablo that makes two. Sense. Um, obviously, because that makes it, sense. This was a hybrid between RPG and role playing game and first person shooter, which they kind of internally had to figure out what exactly their game was. Um. So kind of the RPG aspects you have, at least from the first game stuff, I don't know how much they changed it so much, maybe the name did, but basically you had four playable classes with skill trees, um, you had a hunter, a siren, a soldier, berserker, I think a soldier ended up being like a commando or something in general, and whatnot else. Um, they were also all about the loot and guns, as Kate has mentioned throughout this. They've had so guns, many guns, guns. guns in their game for so much loot, it's actually become a selling point. <laughs> guns so with they, legs. Yes. Guns, guns, guns. That that was actually the first trailer they dropped at PAX East. It was great. Yeah. Um, so that obviously the loot. Which kind of, like, I get the Halo part, but like literally when it came up with this concept, it's basically what Diablo did that a lot of other games have failed at doing. Because Diablo, you, Diablo, you play a story, and then you know what you do? You repeat the story on a harder difficulty for better loot. And then you know what you do again? You repeat the story again for better So this better is loot. one of the things where like... I, at I least at that, this like, time. Like... I, I know, like you said, it's not groundbreaking, but the, I do think one of the reasons that, like, Borderlands, for me at least, sticks out, like, within the genre of, like, looter-shooter type thing is because it's so expansive that I didn't get bored. And I genuinely put a lot of time into the game before I actually had to go back and redo the story. And, like, and for me, building out a world that is that alive and large... Like, I don't, there's really not other places that do that. I was going to bring up how <laughs> I Googled how many weapons are in Borderlands 2. And it says, uh, this article from 2012, Borderlands, which uses a procedural system to randomly generate loot, holds the Guinness World Record <laughs> for the most guns in a video game at a whopping 17.75 million. I don't know. How do you get this number? With, I guess, the combinations and how, I guess, things can be unique. But that's, yes. that's, what, it, guns. that's what they're going with for guns. Borderlands 1, I guess. And guns. Guns, guns, and more guns. And guns with legs. Yes. Yeah, so that was Borderlands 1. So I guess Borderlands 2 is supposed to have more. Because yes. this is like 2012 article. Yeah. They just so I guess this is like right before it came out. Yeah. It's they've increasingly gotten more. Yeah, but I mean, as much as they increasingly gotten more, all they've really done is like slightly modified to be like these are two different guns because oh, one yeah. says one eighty five, one says one eighty four. Yeah, one has yeah. a tint of red, one has a tint of like pink. Progression and like, generation is 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 just what Matt said. Yeah, but still, yeah. it's cool. For, uh, <laughs> removing the levels from consideration, it still brings it down to like two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. I guess. So it's still a lot of guns. No, it's still a lot, and it's great, but, like, it is an oversell of, like, what is actually, like, it's literally, yeah. there's a gun with 183 damage, there's a gun with 184 damage, there's a gun with 185 damage. Those are technically three different guns, and they may may fit, uh, may eventually yeah, make sense. that's the but... selling point. Over one billion guns. Yes. <laughs> in Borderlands 3. That's so many guns! <laughs> guns with legs! Wait, that's too much... <laughs> That's how many. Uh, that's too much loot. So to that's too much fair, RNG. The One I billion guns. <laughs> that's so much RNG. I need you to collect all of them. It doesn't like. <laughs> it doesn't make me mad or like. I know it's like out there, but that's also just very in line with the brand that Gearbox has built for Borderlands. It is like the absurdity of it. Also, uh, I it got to the point, and I think it was in Borderlands Two. 
where I was specifically looking for loot to drop just because I wanted my exact same weapon, but in a different color. So yeah. there was like a large two week period where I was just hunting every pink weapon I could get. Which is why I said like, I've done that exact same thing, but it's also like, so the same gun in pink is a different gun as the same gun in green. Yes. Which technically they are, and I get it, but are they? <laughs> are they? If you just put a paint system in the game, then all that goes away. This is also true. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Recolors. <laughs> Give them to me. Um, um, so one of the other main things after one billion guns was you got to do one billion guns and collect them with your friends. This game was totally designed for co-op. Um, obviously we talked about being it, it totally drop in and drop out. Um, you had, you cook your character in different places, which was unique as well, but it was also one of the unique, most, uh, co-op type games of the time. Cause I kind of, as we talked about gears of last time is co-op following a linear story with two different characters. Army of two actually came out the year before, um, halo you have in there of co-op following a linear story with basically the same character where you're kind of all just master chief playing together. And kind of what came out as well around the time is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, where you kind of follow a linear story with RPG actual aspects, but you're screen tethered. Yeah. And so this game actually was unique in which you were not screen tethered and you could run around in this open world. It was also unique because not that these games had not been made before, but because we obviously mentioned Diablo, but one, it was on a console, which was kind of unique, from at least what I can think of. And two, it was kind of a shooter. <laughs> that was also kind of my unique of like, I don't think I can think of another game that was really a shooter that had these characteristics. Um, I do know, I think the closest I could think of maybe around this time was kind of Fallout, I mean, not Fallout, excuse me, uh, Fable 2. But that co-op play kind of <sighs> that sucked. That co-op was so bad. Yeah, it sucked. That co-op was real bad. I would. I don't count. That's the closest I could come up with at this time. Yeah. I'm not saying it was good. I'm just saying but, that's what and so I also think that's a difference too. Like I, I do generally think that there is a difference between a game that was built with co-op play in mind and a game that had co-op slapped on it as a selling point. Because Fable I two. at least like in that Fable Two era, like slapping co-op on things was really easy. And it got but I genuinely think people got burnt out on it. The same way people got burnt out on multiplayer expansions and games like Mass Effect 3, Tomb Raider, those types of things. Um, but I'm Looking actually at USS really... and Creed. Yeah. <laughs> at Brotherhood was when it started, right? I believe so. Yeah. Um, oh, that was so bad. Or went out for Fable. Why would you ever make that like an MMO? Just like, let me play. So by the myself, concept please. itself is not was even cool. an MMO. It is literally just one drop in that you have to go yeah. to a specific spot to get to, yep. and then you. It... So the concept yeah. itself of what they, they so would dumb. have fully built it out would have been great. And it sounded cool because that guy was amazing. What was his name? Peter something? I don't remember what the hell his name was. He was amazing at selling you shit, but he was terrible at delivering shit. Which is probably why he's gone yeah. and Fable's like pretty much dead. But yeah. what the hell was his name? Peter? Peter something. Dinklage. Just kidding. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, don't but no, like the way he, yeah. they sold this game and the way they talked about it, it sounded amazing. And it sounded kind of what we thought we were going to, what we ended up getting in Borderlands. But that was not it at all. I bought my Fable Xbox 3 controller because oh, of Fable, Fable 3. 3. Oh, Fable man. 3 was so bad, and I have the collector's edition. I had the oh, fancy I box. Love, dude, because oh, Fable 1 and Fable 2 are so good, and Fable 3 is just like... Oh, Fable 3 Dan Elfman scored the Fable series. Like, yeah, here's here's half the game that you loved. <laughs> like, oh, come on, man. It was, Fable 3 is so bad. It's so I don't bad. think we ever talked about this, but I'm glad that I didn't... I wasn't the only one who thought Fable 3. I've never talked about it with anybody, but Fable 3 is Fable 3 bad. is awful. Especially Wait, compared was it, to 2. Was it, so was it, you say, it was butt cheeks. <laughs> it was butt cheeks. It was big butt cheeks. Because Fable 2 is so good and it's just such a letdown. Yeah, Fable 2 is terrible co op line, but playing by yourself and all the stuff you could do and the longevity of that game is amazing. Well, yeah, the longevity like, for sure. And, and the honestly, replayability yeah. of it. Like, this is probably real mean because people lost their jobs, but I'm happy Lionhead Studios closed because we didn't get Fable Legends. 
Yeah, yeah, but we got Fable like connect on the rails. Yeah, Fable Fable the Journey, the that was on the rails awful. connect game. That was that such goes trash. I, everything that they built in the series for you. I to didn't do. even know that was a thing. It was yeah. a thing, and it was so bad because people were like, "I'm protest. not even googling it." I'm not even people gonna google like, it. Were like one... protest. This was like protest before protest was popular. People yeah. hated that so, shit so much. This is something to get mad about. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so it was terrible. Unlike. unlike the, I still hold that the Star Wars game that came with the Connect is so fun. It's so bad good, but I get to be a Jedi, so I can't complain. That one I played in um in a GameStop when I was working there. It was it was it was. Awful. It went against everything that Fable stood for, and they especially considering they came off the three, which they dumbed down from two. It was bad. Oh my yeah, this is worse. Than See, now I'm getting depressed on this episode. This is not what I we're supposed to do. Now I'm getting sad. I love you, Fable. You brought up Fable 2, and I was Fable like, was listen to a Fable episode. Fable was carrying <laughs> Microsoft for a while. Fable was one of yeah. the... You talk about it, Gears? Gears replaced Fable as basically the flag. Yeah, <laughs> because Fable was like the only art, like big-time RPG that we got on Xbox. It was an exclusive... The writing was amazing. Again, Danny Elfman scored the They did stuff. everything you could do in it. You could have kids. You could freaking get... You got STDs in the yeah. damn game. Yep. You, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you your wife would go and cheat on you. Or your husband yeah. would go cheat on you. It was crazy. And then you could yeah, like... Yeah, oh my God. Then they would so kidnap good. your kids and crazy shit. Can I go play you? this again? I'm so hurt again. And then you could gamble, even though it was funny, because you could reset the clock in the system and say you were, like, from 1984 and got all the money and you didn't have to worry about it. But still, now I'm sad. I'm real sad. I loved Fable. Fable Fable 2 was amazing. Fable 1 was a little slow, but I loved it for what it was. Obviously, you could tell they needed Well, the story was good, right? Yeah, the story was was good and everything. Um, but the, obviously, yeah, but it Fable, on the Fable other... Two, oh, Fable gosh. Two had it. Like Fable it, it just made it improved. It, it did what a sequel supposed to do. You're supposed to improve on what you already got. And then Fable Three said, "We're going to make it stupid. And we're going to make it easy." And then they said, "Hey, we we're going to put money. you on a connect on rails." <laughs> and you go like this: Firebolt, spell, oh. swing oh, your sword. Man. Oh dear, I'm looking at these graphics from the original Fable. They are not what I remember. <laughs> so one, no, we do no, not no, do that. I don't. I don't want to look at it. We don't do that. We don't do that. I don't want to look at it. Because I remember it being amazing. It was like it. It was also like revolutionary and like graphics wise. And then like when you this is two thousand four. This is oh. So one, since I've been doing a lot of these game episodes in general, my perspective of doing stuff one between the remasters we're getting from Square Enix because they don't have to bother to make anything because apparently people get excited for remasters. But two, me going back to like even looking at Borderlands one, looking at Gears one looking at some of the Halo games and looking at just other games because on these lists, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks so bad that I thought was so revolutionary at the time. The worst one for me is still Morrowind because Morrowind won awards for how great the design and the graphics were at the time, and it looks awful now. This hurts. Oh, they hurt. Like, trust me, you do not want to go back and look at even just like, even early 2000s games, the mid-2000s games. so I've been playing a lot of WoW Classic and WoW Classic. They have like a literal setting on WoW Classic where you can like set the <gasps> graphics to what it used to be. And I had to turn it off. I couldn't do it. I was like, this is, looks terrible. I can't do it. I, I, I thought WoW looked my, great. My, like the WoW graphics, so I don't even want to imagine that. Yeah, give me my, give me my Ultra back, um, please. I can't, I can't do this. So on Steam, you can actually buy a Fable Anniversary, which is the full HD remaster of the original game. Oh, how much? Is it the it first is... one or second one? It's the first one. I don't think the first one's worth buying again, to be honest. Fully remastered visual fable. Thirty. I yeah, had it's, wings. It's just the first one. I got well, wings, the, and then well, then I got I bad, and I got fable, demon wings. Fable it was great. The, oh, fable remains the only immersive RPG that I have been able to get completely engrossed in the story and like made that character an extension of what I am. You could make your character as fat. A man. You could make them like because I couldn't skinny. choose a woman, and I didn't care because the story was so good. You made it, it makes do, a lot of sense. I mean, you, how you played your characters, how they looked. Like, if you ran a lot. $34, you, Adrian. You could lose. Oh, my oh, gosh. Damn. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so but no, I feel you. Like, it, it's so good. It's so good. Let's do a Fable episode. Let's, 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 re, let's relive the. Let's well, we can do 30 minutes of going, nostalgia. yay, this was my childhood. And then. <laughs> so there is actually an article that somebody wrote that says why Fable destroyed my life and why I'm happy it did. 
And it's just him talking about how awful the third fable is. It is. How it's he bad. will always have the memories of one and two. Fable 3 is bad. We don't like to talk about it, and apparently people just don't mention it because at, at the time, like I said, this was Microsoft. It was Halo, Halo, and I think it was even Fable before it was even Forza came along at this time, too. And then, oh gosh, they just. I they actually think Fable was bed. one of the first games I picked up. I remember Halo's always been the flagship and will probably continue, but I knew Fable was pretty much a, the number two. He was your Scotty no, Pippen in this whole thing. I like legit think Fable was one. I I think I don't think it came in the pack, like in the box with it. You know how they like sold stuff with it, right? But I feel like it was one of those. Fable two still looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I'd imagine so. Right, it wasn't not again what i imagined in my head well it's it's the same thing with like knights of the old republic every time i want to go back and like relive my knights of the old republic i'm just like these graphics were terrible these graphics were real bad that's how freaking but what you want what you want for an xbox man like <laughs> it's, 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 there's a reason why it was so long ago yeah um i don't know where we've gone with this I conversation i forgot that they had somebody named marie the whore yeah then you got a puppy. Oh wow! There's actually an entire yeah. You got a puppy. There, there is an academic article written on sex work in Fable. Yeah, because you could literally they did sex work in there. You could pay I for know. hookers. I got an STD. You should, yeah, I got one too. Yeah. Uh, how old was I when Fable Two came out? <laughs> was I getting my? It STDs? was cool. They didn't show anything, but at that age, I was like, yes, sex, sex and games, black yeah, screen, I'm banging. Two thousand eight. I feel like Matt's really judging me. No, it's fine. We all paid for the sex workers. <laughs> yeah, we all paid for the sex workers. We, we play Grand Theft Auto. We played for the sex. And workers. I the question only was... killed my wife because she found out. Oh, oh you were terrible. <laughs> I just put my wife to work. <laughs> Got to work. I know you could marry multiple people as long as you kept them in different cities. You had to make sure. You yeah, were yeah, 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 yeah. Because they I would find each other. I made the mistake of getting them in a city that was too close, and somehow oh. they found out about each other. Was- no, I, I had one in like like the little starter village, and then like <laughs> one on the other side. So I get like hoes in different area codes. That's how that's how I played it. Then you had to make I sure you got a you had to get a high class one, but apparently they cheated on you all the time. Yeah, that's all I learned. I also just really like the way he looked as a demon more than I like the way he looked yeah. as an angel. Oh, dude. That's what I'm saying. That's what they, they did it by base, so your actual cool. choices, like whether how much food you ate, how much you worked, like thing, your body changed, whether you had like horns, whether you had demon wings. Fable 2 on Steve. But yeah, like, like <laughs> well, because it's also one of those things, like when you start thinking about it, it's like this game actually, like it was more than like the karma of your choices impact your storyline. It was actually, no, they impact your physical appearance you yeah. could get thinner you could get thicker you like it oh fable the wings were cool i loved the wings the wings were cool but i that liked was, it there was three masters i would do really it to good, where though. i would get like a little bit of the horns because it looked cool but then like the skin would start changing and like start looking a little rotted so then i would like nah, do man. some good things to kind of like let them balance out <laughs> Nah, man. I, I played. I played Knights of the Republic, where like my face was cracked by the end of it. I was. I was. I so had was like, beautiful give me, give me blue all wings. Of the horns. I had beautiful blue wings, and they float. It's... Also, Let me um, kill everything. That was another game that I pretty much almost had perfect, and they kept adding DLC, and I kept losing it. Yeah. And I never actually got to do the other DLC because uh, it was just some of the stuff. Like some people it don't actually, realize. It hurts thinking about all the games that have DLC that I haven't played. I try not to upload them because then I lose all my perfectness or like my score goes down in the percentage wise. The only game that I was able to like keep track of with the DLC and keep perfect was Mass Effect 2. But that was because I came onto the Mass Effect franchise so late that all of it was already out. To, to be fair, we probably need to start back on Borderlands. Yeah, that was half in Fabled episode. Like, we, yeah. we can do it. We, we might as well release a double tip on that one. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could. <laughs> Mini sewed. Uh, so now back to your reg- regularly scheduled programming. Um, uh, we are transitioning into groundbreaking mechanics game. Yeah, so yeah. Right. So once again, just like because I talked about this was a co-op game co-op, where you could drop okay. in and it, and it was RPG aspects of everything. Oh, um, so yeah. an open point, world. As- so my point with where that was going was that ultimately, like the fact that board, I, I'm really excited that Borderlands 3 is coming out when it is because I do feel like there is kind of like a co-op res- renaissance happening in games right now, which 
we haven't had at least for as long as we've been together, Matt. <laughs> so that that's really cool. And it's something I'm excited for. And I think that like Borderlands is one of those top tier co-op games for me. Yeah, and I mean, the game was designed for that. Like I said, the the main thing that I loved about the game, obviously, we have all the other stuff, the shooting duo, the fact that I could play in a co-op game that was open world and I could run away without being tethered was like the best thing, and it wouldn't break. I think there was another game, like Three Kingdoms or Kingdom or something like that, that tried this on console. It was one of the very first ones, but it was awful. Um, it came out with, I believe, X, it came out with a 360 launch or something like that, and then they tried a new one. I don't think it ever got banged, but it was one of the few that I remember. It was almost like a knockoff of, like, Skyrim, basically. <laughs> but it was multiplayer, but it sucked. Um, but yeah, this was actually one that was good. There was not really issues. You could drop in and drop out. Um, you could even help your characters level. Now, obviously, the story of this game was not great at least for the first one as there was no story but the game itself from the these mechanics and like how much you could play with people was the reason everybody just kept going back and playing it yeah because it's one of i think uh it's totally playable by yourself i think you'll have a, a great time playing by never yourself did it. i've never played it but like i i like I, I do genuinely think that the way it's built you can do it by yourself and it'll be fine i think some missions will be a little hard but i do think that like unlike gears where you lose a whole bunch of the mechanics of not playing co-op i do think borderland facilitates solo play that being said i do not think it has replayability if you play by yourself like i don't think you get your your full piece out of it which also did anybody else ever join their friends game so they could take the level one character on the level 70 and just hide and then get like 10 million exp for every kill and then you're like level 60 in like two minutes i didn't hide but yes did you try to shoot them and do nothing yeah oh you've you've been with me when we've gone and had somebody run us through stuff and multiple different games you remember we like went through the trial with bryce and he was just like stay there and i was like no i want to kill things and then i died yeah that's that's pretty on brand yes. yeah that, that that right. okay um which kind of leads to our last but why though um uh basically the art of the game um could we talk about the style structure but basically borderlands has this kind of amazing visuals yet it kind of look i mean not really cartoonish but comic booky which is one on purpose um because basically they they redid the game in a cell shaded comic book artwork is what i believe it's called <laughs> of some sort i don't do comics so i don't know if kate has any more on that but um so i do comics like it's literally just a, a an action drawing like it's cell shading yeah. they're not using like kirby stippling or anything but like it it's just really unique yeah. i don't really have anything else to say it, it it's outlines like cell yeah. shading all it means is it outlines every piece of the character um and the cool thing is when you watch cosplayers do this because they'll actually go through and outline their face as if they were a drawing. Um, at PAX West, um, the Borderlands booth actually had a face painter doing that for everybody. It was a real long line, so I didn't do it. But um, cell shading had, like, cell shading and costuming and stuff like that, like, it's kind of been around. But I would say, like, in cosplay usage, like, a lot of it goes back to Borderlands and then it just also it just looks cool i mean i can't really i have nothing yeah. else to add other than it looks great and it's supposed to replicate like an actual image right um but i guess the cool like the thing about this because obviously we look at this is this game is technically full of dark humor and horrible things oh yeah and, and we all laugh about it but it's kind of masked by these visuals you don't yeah. have this super realistic is hyper thing they're technically they're gore but it's not gore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so it, you just don't notice all the stuff that's going on you know it but you don't think like oh my gosh because of the style and it's it's people people love the humor in the game i think it's great but you just don't i mean it's funny but it you can't take itself so seriously like, lat, like shotgunning a shotgunning a locust in gears they just like fall into chunks and like I played Borderlands 3 and they've upped like the visual damage that happens on things. But I never thought it was gory. <laughs> yeah. 
because it's just like happy and fun and light and it's also just really absurd yeah and so it it just doesn't feel like it so obviously this has been good it's been renowned and everything else but it's not like this just happened this was great groundbreaking so actually this hadn't happened till the very last moment of the thing they actually call it like the 11th hour or something like this where essentially what ended up happening was they started this in 2005 kind of coming up with this idea the problem is essentially halo releases fallout 3 releases gears of war releases and mass effect releases so the original concepts which they actually de debuted in like 2007 were these hyper realistic you know looks like everything you know like actual you know characters and everything else and then they saw all these other games come out and they're like oh shit this isn't going to work. Basically, we just don't want to be a poor man's rage. <laughs> yeah. Or we don't want to be basically a poor man's Fallout 3. And so at the last moment, like within the last year of development, they decided we're just going to overhaul our entire art. And they basically threw everybody in a room, said come up with something different because we need to stand out. Obviously, um, it worked out for them and didn't work out for everybody as essentially the original art director obviously did not go well for them and they eventually left and then obviously uh was it Pritchard I believe mm -hmm. correct Pritchard the actual Randy Pritchard yes Randy Pritchard yeah he ended up having to step in to be the art director for the last this last thing to actually re overhaul this entire thing and this is how we kind of got Borderlands which sucks and we feel bad and it's weird because the whole crunch and the whole time but to be honest, I don't think this game succeeds if they actually go with what the original designs were. For one, the testing group thought it was awful. But two, mainly with all the games that released, because, you know, games are worked on and seeped up. Like, they, from their knowledge, they said they didn't know Gears was being worked on. They didn't know all these things were coming. And then all of a sudden they happened to be last in 2009. Like, oh, we're just about to release a game that looks just like everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and I... so, Yeah. Like, I am happy they changed it. I think you're 100% correct in that it doesn't succeed. And it, I don't think it lasts as long because I do think, like, what they did with the art change, it also made it really, really, like, brandable. Yes. Like, it's something you can sell a lot of. It's super bright, which is really different. It, like, just looking at, like, how much Borderlands stuff we have consumed recently, like, it's an art style that works with different things really well, and because it is, it's drawn, or it's, it's animated to have a 2D element to it, it looks really well, really good in marketing material. And so, like, it's a very good idea, and I don't think any of the crazy promotion stuff that they do would work without that art style, and I love that art style, and it's amazing. But I also feel like the devs who worked on this game were pulling some Red Dead Redemption hours to overhaul an entire game that had already been animated to a new animation style. And I feel real bad because devs are people. Yeah, I know. I, sadly, I have looked at some of the footage of what they displayed for the first early trailers and stuff, and it really was like, there's no way this would have succeeded. <laughs> And I get it. Yeah, I think like I, when when I when I'm thinking about it, and this comes out, or I think Borderlands Two would be a rep better representation of why I think this looter shooter, like why the looter shooter works better for Borderlands, is one like the story is just fun, right? It's a fun story, claptrap, making crazy jokes. But then you have like Destiny come out, which is basically a looter shooter, but that game got real stale, real quick. But they're both looter shooters, but I'd play Borderlands 2 over Destiny in that same time frame, like any day of the week. Because there's just more stuff to do in Borderlands 3. Even though Destiny looks prettier, it's a beautiful game, love the graphics, but there's just more stuff to do, even with its cartoony art style. Thank you for segueing to me. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think that big piece comes, at least for me, like when we, when we roll, because we rolled into Destiny like when it first came out. And it got grindy real quick. And it was the same small areas. And you could see that there was more area, but you couldn't go to the area. Whereas with Borderlands 2 and even Borderlands 1 to an extent, like 
if I saw it, I could go there. It was extremely open world and it was so massive that I never got bored playing it and running circles to grind out loot. It wasn't that bad because of how interactive the environment was and how many different areas I could actually go to in the game to get different things. And as the expansions came out, um, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And the world of Pandora is so expansive that like it's something that if I had time, like I wouldn't mind play replaying Borderlands 2 again. Like, it is something that you can just re-dive back into, whereas, like, Destiny, after about week two, I felt like I had done everything. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch of articles out there, too, right, of, like, is Borderlands 3 going to take all the Destiny 2 players that are still playing it, yeah. people are still playing Destiny 2? I'm sure there's articles out there if you if you just Google it, because it's, like, what other looter shooter out there is doing well yeah. other than, like, Destiny 2? And even then, like, is it really doing that well? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, Diablo 3 is still there. And obviously that's not a shooter, but is it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, Diablo's three still there, but like they haven't got like any content <laughs> like, no. in years. Anthem <laughs> is Anthem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Division two is pretty much it's not dead, but it's not. It runs, runs in the same problems as Destiny. Like, Warframe. Gets... There's apparently yeah. a lot of people playing Warframe. I don't know who's playing. I don't know who's playing Warframe, but apparently like fifty million people are playing Warframe. I mean, 50 million people have it installed on their Xbox and it's just sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just know it. apparently a lot of people keep playing Warframe. I still don't know who's playing this game. So when it comes from like looter shooters of 2019, like there's like an indie title in here called Risk of Rain 2, which I know we've yes. gotten stuff for. Apex is apparently a looter shooter, which that's that that's not. Mm, I mean, technically, it's yes. It's a VR game. Yeah, but it's technically mm. looter shooter aspects. Basically, all BR mm. games are like looter shooters that just happen to True. have an end game or a point. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, don't like looking up genre of games because you can look at technicalities of anything. Alienation, which I've never heard of. Shadow Warrior Two, which I've never heard of. Apparently, because Borderlands 2 got the expansion, which is it's called Lilith something, but it's essentially the prelude to Borderlands 3, that is actually on the list. Borderlands 2, which came out seven years ago, is on the best looter shooter games of 2019. Yeah, there you go. I think that says a lot. It says a lot. Yeah. Do we want to talk about this lawsuit, or are we just going to go on? No. Okay. Mm. I didn't want to ruin I when I had it and I thought about putting it and it's just I didn't have time. Yeah, I just think it's important enough. Uh, That's another thing. It was just a voice actor with claptrap. It wasn't like a huge to me it wasn't a huge ordeal. It's still a big thing. You think he actually gets anywhere? I mean he filed a lawsuit, but Cool, I mean, so did Coltrane twenty years later. Yeah, but the, the guy was actually still working <laughs> on the game. <laughs> Was he already actually when he filed it? Was he working on it? Because it looked like he was. He already was fired when he filed. No, I, I he did the Lilith's DLC stuff. Okay, like that came out this year. Okay. Yeah. But so we're not yeah. talking about it then. Yeah, we can. No, I don't Mention think so. It. I mean, if you want, we talk about well, it. Well, can't keep I mean, talking about it and telling like... me it's a big deal. So I'm like, do I spoke to mention it then? No, we can just let it go. Assaulting people, bad. That's the yeah. premise of Borderlands. We're good. <laughs> Borderlands is like Australia. Oh, that was my fun fact. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> what is this transition? Ah. Um, <laughs> so I guess Very I'm worried. Again. From the art fact to, I guess, kind of a fun fact uh, to end the game of Borderlands and its whole kind of concept and everything else, it basically started in Australia and kind of ends in Australia and everything else. To where, obviously, if you look at their history of what they do with Pandora, uh, yeah. how it's basically what how people got there and who the people are there, it's kind of Australia. They've actually used, I believe, it's 2K Australia has actually helped make some of the games and been on there. So they actually have stuff on there and it have developed part of the Borderlands and everything else. So Australia actually plays a big part in the concept and basically the team of Borderlands. That's I can cool. see that. I definitely see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
So, and we'll let this bay. That's all we got. We're out. Um, <laughs> um, so that's about all I have. Does anybody have any, I guess, before we get out of here? Oh my God, there's what? a Borderlands. There is a post on Steam for Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And it says the header is way too many Australian accents. The body yes. is, I get this was made in 2K Australia, but yep. so far in like the first hour, everyone but Nisha and the returning cast have an Australian accent, and it keeps breaking the fourth wall for me. Yeah. Borderlands runs through Australia. Also, their humor is really dry. It feels like someone is trying to be funny at Gearbox and emulate their style, and it's not panning out. It's Australia. <laughs> um, so any final things or final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, no, it's fine. I don't know how much I'll be able to play it um, just with like all the games that are coming out here pretty soon. There's but so many games. I don't know if <laughs> if there's like a, a break that comes up and I'm not playing something else and, you know, Matt, Kate or other people get it. I'd love to play some co-op again. It'd be, it'd be fun. It's a good game. Like it's the it's it's a fun game. I haven't played it nearly as much as you guys have, uh, but I enjoy playing it when I was playing it. Even though I played it like by myself because I didn't have anybody else who who had it, so I played the game largely by myself when I when I did play through it. And it makes me excited for Borderlands Three. I hope it does well. Co op games, something a little bit different than you know what we have. Because when we were talking about like Destiny and Anthem and like all these games that kind of all blend together in my head to be honest borderlands 3 is probably gonna be that outlier kate i am really excited for borderlands 3 uh monday i was extremely hungover pax west monday but it was the only time that there was like it was my last chance to get in for borderlands 3 so i still made us get up early <laughs> And I was dying. And I ran into that line. And it is still one of my favorite, like, the best things that I did. Because I had so much fun playing it. Um, and I'm really excited for, for the third one to come out. Um, so I can play all of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I just love Borderlands. I don't really, like, have anything else to say other than it's a great game. Um, and I'm just happy that co-ops are coming back. Because it's a good problem to have for me because a lot of the times Matt and I just like either play games where we can jump in the lobby real quick or we have to play MMOs. Uh, we haven't really played too many co-op games together. So this, it's, this has me really excited. Um, but to echo Adrian, there's so many games. I, I, yeah, there really is. I need to play Blair Witch and I need to finish the campaign for Gears or start the campaign for Gears. Start it. Start the campaign for Gears. <laughs> And then Borderlands comes out this week. Like, I don't... Yeah, I again, I just need to get, like, real sick. Like, with a bad flu. Where I can just tell, like, tell everybody, leave me alone, please. And I can just sit and play video games. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. Um. So, like I said, obviously, played a lot of Borderlands. Like, everybody excited for Borderlands 3. It's kind of one of those, what I have liked about, obviously, between the co-op on. But these gaming franchises are kind of seem like they're going back and seem to be adding on to what they do. Like, I still think the pre-sequel thing was just a rip-off money grab. And obviously, these spin-off things. Um, and it's been years since we got, like, an actual, like, full new game. So it should be interesting to see. Um, it's kind of just, I mean, I, I know it, cause obviously we just released the Gears, we have all these games, but it is one of those of, like, it's not necessarily groundbreaking in a lot of things, but once again, it was just good. And that's what people like, is good. Um, this one didn't even, not even critically acclaimed as some of the other games we've talked about, but as far as players, obviously people are playing, and people are buying this game, and people still love the concept. I still see people... To this day, even before, like, earlier in this year and even last year, we'll still stream and just get up to play this game because it's not bad just to jump in and screw around for two hours or whatever, just killing things and picking up guns. Um, so, well, hopefully it turns out well. Um, so, yeah, I guess Kate, get us out of here from there. Yeah, 
So as always, you can find the podcast at But Why Though PT on every piece of social media, although we're most active on Twitter. And if you want to support us a little bit more, head on over to patreon.com slash But Why Though PC. Anything you can do helps. Um, and you get like extra stuff like exclusive episodes, access to our research notes. Check it out. And yeah, and you can find me at Omemeth Randier on Twitter. Adrian? Yeah, you can find me at Super Reese 93 on Twitter. Matt? S U P E R U I Z 93, episode 116. Sorry. No worries. Sorry. No worries. I, don't, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I'm real no embarrassed worries. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so now that Kate ruined all that, yeah. um, <laughs> you can. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say because I was like, oh, you just okay, fucked Adrian. Adrian? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter. At Super Reese 93, S U P E R R U I Z 93. Matt? Uh, you can find me in Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs>